The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, UNU Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. I'm a big fish, small pond, got the days free and the nights long. I create my own reality. Who I am is fine with me. It's famous, famous as I want to be. Who I am is fine with me. It's who I am. It's who I am. Hold on, here we go, here we go. All right, radio listeners, we are coming in, and now our Facebook Live is live. Hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. Ciao, Bailey. Ciao, Bailey. It's Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? So you've already heard of Ciao, Bailey, so you know that there are foreigners in the apartment, which means everything is beautiful. Um, So we want to welcome you to our show. Let me see who has popped in already. Immediately, Richard Koch, also uh, a foreigner. He's Dutch. So, Richard, you're going to love tonight's show. It's, I'm calling it Imported Art. Um, so, we, uh, Ed Kutu has joined us. He is from Blade Salon in Connecticut, uh, in Rocky Hill. And Ed Zito has joined us. Victor Flores. Hi, Victor Flores. Uh, Victor, we have to talk about getting on the show. we got to get a date down. He's an amazing chef. Um, all right. So, I just want to, Hector Garcia has joined us now. Radio listeners, if you are listening on the radio and you're saying, why is she naming all these names? Because uh, we are Facebook living as well as going live on the radio. And when we do that, a lot of our friends pop up or regulars that listen every week. And so I personally like to acknowledge them because they have, uh, they're have they very loyal and sweet to come back every week. And lots of times they have questions and things like that. And I want to shout them out. So we are on Armed Radio, armeddigitalmedia.com armradioglobal.com if you want to listen live on the radio uh, from your computer uh, anywhere you go you can always listen live Tuesday nights 9 p.m. Eastern if you miss the show oh my god Gina Savino has joined I don't know if you guys know what happens here she is my cousin in Boston when Gina Savino joins we clap yeah! oh my god and Dave Downs Dave Downs I am so happy to see you I haven't seen you in a while wait to see what I have cooked tonight Dave Downs or, or, well, I didn't cook all of it, but Michael Bredner has joined us. Kia Nelson, Michael Bredner is in Massachusetts. Kia Nelson is in Philadelphia. Gina, love you. I'm so glad you're here early. Okay. Ciao, Gina. Ciao, Gina. Hi, well, Gina. Gina, just get ready to swoon because these, I have also hashtag beautiful boys <laughs> because these are beautiful boys. Maria, yeah, they're like bellissimo. Yours. Never like your voice. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, this little rascal, Massimiliano Sims, Ciao. Ciao. It's from Napoli, is that yes. correct? Correct. Yo, I'm from Naples, Italy. You can speak Italian or English. Napoletano for all uh, the guys and ladies, and the ladies and gentlemen that are there, they speak so so Italian. Si, si. Sono di Napoli, eh, vivo a Tutto New York. Familia uh, mia. Ah, parlo italiano, viene, viene qui, so. My whole, my whole family will be, love. they speak Italian, a lot of our friends. Very beautiful things. I'm here in America since four years and I love America. And America loves you. Oh. How about that? <laughs> Thank you. Oh I my need God. some love. I need kisses. <laughs> oh, don't know. say that because <laughs> there'll be people outside the building. <laughs> well, Karen, I'm looking forward to. Okay. Karen Vergana has joined. Uh, Isabella Raskowski, who is really my cousin Marisa. She has joined us. Marisa, wait till you see these beautiful... Beautiful boys tonight. You're going to love them. Ciao, Bello. And, uh, Annette Zito, that they stay parlando. Ciao, Bello. Ciao. Oh, my God. Bill Goffey, Napoli. Yes, Bill. You would... Rick Crom has joined us. Hi, Rick Crom. We Rick. were talking about you earlier. Our mutual friend who is wonderfully talented and a wonderful person. Okay. Michael Rizzo has joined us. Hi, Michael Rizzo. Oh, my God. And Leo Rodriguez. Two in CM, all together. Ready? Leo Rodriguez. Fantastic. Leo is what I call our accidental intern. He put together a really cute little promo. Did you see it? Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, of yeah, yeah. guys. Really cute. He puts together our promos and all that stuff. And right. if you also mention something, uh, like a, a, a .com, he will pull it up. Oh, amazing. Great. Actually, you know what, Leo? Actually, after I'm going to ask Maria your contact, because I'm working on something. Maybe you can. Oh, no, Leo is amazing. Yes. Yes. You, so you're going to ask for his contact, yes. Leo? Are you prepared for that? 
<laughs> May I give Massimiliano your contact? Leo is swooning Something right now. Very He's sexy. fanning himself. Something very sexy. Oh, he'll, he'll do it sexy. <laughs> All right. I'm going to actually start, if it's okay with you, Brady, I'm going to start with Massimiliano because he yeah. is on fire. Yeah. Oh, He's yes. on fire, and I think we... First of all, I said, Massimiliano, can you be here by 8.30? No problem. He just, like an Italian movie star, just came in. I couldn't even be mad at him because he brought me a present. He smells delicious. Yes. And Brady and I noticed he has very cute glasses on. Beautiful. Brady tried to ask him if he could have them already. Okay. Udenia Messes, that's my girlfriend. Hi, honey. How are you? Kenny Holcomb has joined us from Tennessee. Hi, Kenny. We love Kenny. I called you today, Kenny. I don't know if you got that message. All right. So much to talk about. Now, Massimiliano. Mm -hmm. Yes. We met about four years ago, right? Mm -hmm. When you first got here. Yes. And I was in love with him immediately because he looks like my cousin Robbie. Now, Roberto, my mio cugino Roberto, you look like you could be in my family, in that family. Uh, now, there we're from Avellino, so it's very close to where you live, right? Yeah, it's about an hour away. Okay, know. about an hour away. Yeah. Now, by car. by car. Well, the Italian, the way the Italians drive, it's an yeah, hour away, so which means it's crazy, two and a half hours so, from us. Yeah. Perfect. The Italians you, you drive like perfect example, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah darling, you know. So he's like an Italian. Uh, now listen, I was going to say an Italian movie star, but you would you consider yourself an actor, a singer? So what category would you put yourself in? Uh, honestly, I start everything as a singer. So myself, I consider myself as a singer. But mostly when I introduce myself to people, I introduce myself as a superstar. Oh! No, well, I'm sorry, I'm sounding a little bit cocky. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I introduce to people as a live performer. Right, okay. So I will, my intention is like to be able to be dancing, singing, and acting in the same time. Like, you know. A triple threat, they triple call threat, it. Yeah, and then playing also an instrument. So that's what I'm actually working on right now. Do you play an instrument? I play a bit of piano and guitar as well. Okay, know? beautiful. Yeah. Michael Vaccaro has joined us. Hi, Michael Vaccaro. Ciao. Su Ciao. Suzanne uh, Brown has joined us. Rita Cugnali, you missed the introduction. You'll have to go back. I have beautiful uh, uh, imported talent tonight. Uh, Brady is Canadian. Massimiliano is Italian. Mm -hmm. He has now told us many things, but you'll have to go back and listen. My cousin Rina, Rina Cugnali is Abruzzese. Ah, ciao, La famiglia de Abruzzi. Ciao, Rina. Forza Abruzzo. Rina Forza Abruzzo. Abruzzo. See, yes. she's loving it. Ma a Mandar has joined us. Mandar Chick Magnet. <laughs> he is Indian and he can dance. I, I, I mean, I, I don't even know what to you do with to go and see her. <laughs> listen, I am going to have a party on June 11th of all my regulars that listen, and uh, M Mandar, you are invited. I am put, sending out an evite because all the regulars that listen, Mandar is going to have to dance. You're going to have to dance, Mandar. He's a chick magnet. Everywhere you see him on Facebook, there's women around him. Wow. <laughs> it's just, I don't know how you do it. Okay, uh, uh, Forta e Gentile, she said. Okay, uh, Rina said. Yeah. Now, so you came from Italy... Now, how did you learn to speak English so beautifully? Because your English is beautiful. Thank you, Maria. I was actually, I learned and uh, I grew up with all the, um, uh, I was like, a, and I was amazed by the pop culture, American pop culture. I actually was a great fan of Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears. Of course. Like when I was 11, 12, like the, you know, and I always wanted to be, to be part of the boy band. And from there, I was like actually listening a lot of uh, songs, uh, movies, and from there I pick up my English. But mostly... I always lived abroad, like never in Italy. Like I was living in uh, London for a bit. Oh, like, really? In, uh, okay. Shanghai for another bit. Wow. In China for a couple of years, and I was surrounded by foreigners. Like you know, and that's where I improved and I picked up my English. Very, very, very good. Now, Brady, we're gonna flip over to you. We're gonna go back and forth. Brady, you are Canadian. Yes. And I asked you earlier if you speak French, and you said you do. Oui, je parle français. <laughs> This is the sexiest show ever. <laughs> Everyone is failing themselves now. We have Italian speaking, we have French, we have English. Oh my God, so they've traveled the world. Uh, so you grew up in what part of Canada did you grow up in? Because it's huge. Canada's gigantic. Yeah, I actually grew up in a, so a smaller part of Canada. I grew up in Prince Edward Island, Canada. It's beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. yes. Um, I've seen pictures. Pretty cold uh, for the most part. Most of Canada is like that. For the most part. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, I grew up... So, there. does this weather seem like like a joke to you? When when people say, oh, my God, I'm freezing. Do yeah. you think, like... 
Because to me, Canadians always have like a windbreaker on in, in January. Oh, it's true. Yeah, yeah, I mean, honestly, like we like, <laughs> I see people in shorts. I think they get like in Vancouver, there was one time I saw people wearing shorts one day. It was like one day, it was like maybe 30 degrees or something Celsius, but or Celsius, yeah. yeah. I, get, I get confused whenever. Now, do I, you guys have, we have Fahrenheit. You have Celsius, Celsius and, yeah. and the Italians have Celsius. Celsius yeah. We're the only ones that are holding out. I'm going to say 30 degrees Fahrenheit. See? Out okay. Canada. Right, right. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. So Massimiliano said that he was uh, attracted to that whole boy band culture. Mm -hmm. What was your um, what was your draw to music? Um, it was my dad, actually. My dad is an incredible guitarist. He oh, plays really? Guitar. Yeah, he's like insane. And he'll tell you to this day, he's very humble. He'll go, yeah, I'm not as good as I used to be. And I'm like... Dad, that's not true. You're pretty incredible. He's been playing guitar for his entire life. He learned by himself at age nine, I think is what he said. Um, and he always had a love for music. So I would, when I was growing up, he would go away on the weekends and he would be playing with the band and then also driving trucks and stuff like that during the week, right? That's what you have to do. Yeah, yeah. It's part of being an artist and performer. And so then after a while, you know, when I decided I took a liking to music, Dad was like, oh, you, you're a good singer. Let's work on that. And then... I wanted to play drums, you know. Wow. It's so, it's I love so, percussion. Yeah, yeah. It's my favorite. So all because of my dad, really, was like the main instrumentalist. And I think whenever I saw, like, you know, for me growing up, seeing, like, Stevie Wonder, for example, I was just always like, oh, you're so good. And I yeah. just don't know, you know, how I'm so drawn to you. you know, it's incredible how you're such a great performer. So, oh, okay. It, I, and so it came, it was because of your dad that you were attracted to music. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And Massimiliano, anyone in your family a musician mm -hmm. besides you? No, my grandmother was a little, he, she played a little bit of piano. Oh, really? But uh, honestly, nobody in my family was, is an artist. Um, the black sheep of uh, the family. So. Well, well, the black sheep of the family is usually the most interesting one, nice. if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> I've always thought that. When people say I'm the black, I always think, yeah, that's why you're in New York. I, I think this is a land of black sheep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we you know, and I always say that what I love about New York is there are no misfits because there are no norms. Yes. It's uh, ever-changing. It's just like, it's so fluid and it's so beautiful and it's like, when you're making art, it's, it's always changing, you know? Um, now, uh, so what made you start to be attracted? What was it? Was it a person that said, hey, you're talented, you should start singing? Was it that you just put your mind to it? What made you decide that you were going to start singing? Me? Yeah. I mean, I actually, honestly with you, I was always drawn by music in general. Um, my dad also has a great taste in music, I believe, like he used to talk to George Michael, uh, I know Stevie you love George Wonder. Michael. We'll I love talk about we talk about later. Yeah. Um, and Stevie Wonder, Luther Vandross, Lionel Richie, all the time. And even Celine Dion, Myra Carey, Whitney Houston, all these amazing voices. And yeah. I always wanted to have a good voice. I always wanted to be able to sing and to express myself to singing. And uh, since so the beginning of my life, I said, like, I really would like to sing. I really would like to deliver a message through my voice. And that's what happened. And since I was a little kid, I started to play piano. I was 11, and my mom wanted me to play piano. And then after that, I started guitar, a little bit of saxophone. And when I really took this seriously, meaning that I really said, this is what I wanted to do, it was like when I was 20, 21 years old, or when I was in China. I started taking lessons with different coaches and producing, uh, and then going around, like, uh, performing in events. and. Wow, amazing. Now, um, on this show tonight, I, w I really want them both to perform. And I, I know that what happens is we start talking and then we run out of time. Peter Feliciano has joined us. Uh, Manny Soto has joined us. So I'm going to actually put it out to you. I'd love for both of you to perform. Who would like to go first? What do you think, Massimiliano? I would like to go first. You yeah, want to go first? Yes. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do, stay right there. Brady, I, th I, I think we, we can switch for Absolutely. just for this. Yeah, yeah. We'll switch. Usually I put the taller person in the back. I said, Brady, you and I are shorties. <laughs> and we're going to we sit in the front. <laughs> Massimiliano, siete yes, yes, yes. qui, mi amore. Yes. And now I have, because he does play piano, but it's so far away, and I don't want him to, his back to be to the camera. So I'm going to pull up a track. Uh, to um, Faith, let me make sure this comes through. Hold on, everybody, just hang in there. I got to get this right because I, um, I just want to make sure that I get this right. I can also do a cappella if you want. 
Yeah. Yeah, of course. Oh, I would love that. Yeah, I or, think if you can do a cappella, that is. It would be most, even better, right? And I have the I have a little drum set here. But actually, yes, I would like to do a little. Uh, Faith is one of my favorite songs. Like it's from George Michael. You know what? Every time I hear Faith, I think of you. Oh, Dolly, that's a compliment. It's the truth. Yeah, because it's such a great. I mean, the meaning behind it, and but also. Maybe it was more sexual, it was more like about relationship, but I think that we can all connect to the word faith. Absolutely. Because faith is like, you know, having faith is what really makes us move forward in life. Absolutely. So that's why I connect to the song so much and I love it. So this is for you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Massimiliano Chimps. Faith. Well, I guess it would be nice if I could touch your body. I know not everybody has got a body like you. Oh, but I gotta think twice before I give my heart away. And I know all the games you play because I'm playing them too. Oh, but I need some time off from that emotion. Time to pick my heart up off the floor. Oh, baby, I reconsider my foolish notion. Well, it takes a strong man, baby, but I'm showing you the door. Cause I gotta have faith. Ooh, I gotta have faith. Because I gotta have faith, faith, faith. I gotta have faith, faith, faith. Wow, Massimiliano Sims. Bellissimo, mio amore. Grazie, bellissimo. grazie, Annette, ah. grazie, Drivi. Amore, io ti amo. I, like I, I come have, to you. I, I feel like we are in an Italian movie. I love it. It's fantastic. A Later on, Massimiliano, I'm going to show you. Tengo uh, Anna Magnani qui. Bellissima. Bellissima. Anna Magnani. Anna Magnani is my favorite Italian actress. Oh, my God, look who just joined us. Darius. Oh, Darius. Darius. Darius, how are you? <laughs> okay, we are going to switch bye, around. Bye, bye. So he's going to perform. Yes. Oh, my God. Massimiliano. Beautiful. That was so sexy. Oh, yeah. Brady, I'm going to be off frame for you because you got your guitar. Um, and we'll leave Massimiliano uh, in the background. They're sure. beautiful. Yeah. How exciting is this? Oh my god, I'm having so much fun already. <laughs> as soon as music starts, I'm yeah, happy. <laughs> and uh, now we have everybody popping on. You guys having a good time? I told you they were amazing. This is incredible. Okay, Brady, you see. Are we able to take the beer now? You can drink yeah. the beer. That's why I put it there for you. Is he so cute? He asked me permission to drink his beer. <clears throat> of know. course you can drink right it. In America. You, know, you don't know what the rules are. No? That's, okay, I'm going to back up now. Brady, you want to tell us a little bit about this or just go right into it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I've been, I'm releasing my fifth album on iTunes and Spotify, which I'm super excited about. It's called Homme Dangereux, which is in French. What does it mean? Um, it means dangerous man. I'm oh, not I dangerous, love it. though. I'm actually, I don't think I am. <laughs> well, um, who knows? Yeah, I how do you say, know, right? how do you yeah. say it again? Um, don't you um, don't you go? Yes. Oh, I love that. And I only yes. have one French song on the album. Um, and I'm going to sing this song, which is also off the album. Um, it's called All Alone, and I wrote it. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Also, Mom, Dad, Dad Ryan, Alicia, Lee, Lexi, my nieces, if you're watching right now, you shouldn't be because you're in bed. But I'm happy to see that you're watching. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Yay, I'm so excited. Cool. All right, anytime you want. I wanna give out, oh, but you 
got me sick and ho, ho, ho. Together we're, here. Here together, but I love that. All of Thank now, you do you go by Brady or Brady Cudmore? Brady, I actually have um, my name is a registered trademark, so it's just Brady. I love um, that. And in Massachusetts, we love the name Brady because yeah. Tom Brady is our quarterback. <laughs> yeah, and so you can come closer. Vienna Vicino, Vienna yeah. Vicino, fantastic. Everybody, a hand from Massimiliano Sims Woo! and Brady Cudmore, just simply Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So now, Massimiliano, I want to go back to you. You uh, we mentioned George Michael, and I know that you love George Michael. What was it about, uh, what was it that uh, attracted you to that artist? Because we all have people that we're very connected to. A lot of people, first of all, I wanted to say that, yes, I started my career as, not as a George Michael impersonator, but doing a show about him. Like, actually, I produced a show uh, off Broadway, I did a small uh, show about him and about his music. About him. Okay, what I didn't I'm, know that. Uh, really uh, attached about it is like, you know, the charisma. He was a great, uh, a great songwriter, and I think also a great producer. Like, and uh, we need more George Michael nowadays in music. So yeah, I agree with you 100%. I took him because I relate to him a lot, like I think personally, but also mostly like uh, in general. And I love his music, so I think that uh, many artists like him are kind of. Uh, but I don't want to be sounded like that uh, in a negative way. Like they are no more, they are not anymore mainstream. So you know what is mainstream is completely different direction that we're going. So I believe I get close to him because I relate also a lot of my music too. I write a lot of my music too, um, uh, taking as an example uh, his works mostly. Okay. And many people say you shouldn't do his music because you know you're Massimiano Shims as an artist, but maybe that's true and then that's the step that I'm taking moving forward because I did already two shows about his life here in New York and now I'm moving forward like you know doing more of my music but that relates to him. Yeah, but you know what I, I feel, and Brittany, see if you agree with this, I feel that sometimes we're in different pockets at different times in our lives and it, 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 in that particular time in your life it is important to do that show because that artist speaks to you 
and then you you go to a different level from there. But I think that you should go with your gut all, for most of the time. And then once we, it, it's oh, there's an Italian word, sfogare, mm -hmm. right, that I yes. love. It's like to express, say, I mean, express, express, but it's like to... Like explode it, basically yeah but it's, it's a good thing like if you spoke out you get it off your chest yes. yeah right my yes. mother always used to say when i get so upset she'd say you need to this it. yes. it's like you have to you have to get it off your chest yes. and i feel that music is like that yeah. and as artists we're there are different times in our lives and i don't know if this has happened to you where you just need to say what you need to say yeah right have you have you seen that you've gone through changes Absolutely. expressing yourself okay. yeah and I think a lot of it too like I think it's funny because a lot of times we think about doing covers and we go well you know why are we singing that song and a lot of times it's because maybe it's the, the exact message that's in our heart right we'd like to express our take on it because it's inspired us in a way yeah I mean? absolutely um, and then when it comes to my own music I feel like I, I've written so much I mean I've written a lot of songs and I find that Though some of them sound the same. <laughs> well, me uh, too, because I tend to be drawn to the similar key. Yeah. I like I love the key of G, so I will very often, I'll find myself there in someone like Adarius or my, my uh, um, Lynn Portis is my musical director. She's very good about guiding me in a, you know, to evolve to something different. But yeah. we are, we do tend to do that. Yeah, but. and they always have a different meaning. You know? Right. So sometimes that will happen. It's inevitably going to happen. And sometimes you record something that sounds almost exactly like something else and you have to go well gotta scrap that one right um, because it's in our head yeah yeah but we're inspired in different ways and sometimes you know the real gem i think that we find when we're writing and working on music is just that song that speaks to us whether it's our own song or it's somebody else's yeah, yeah. absolutely and i think it's like I, we've all mentioned stevie wonder mm -hmm. i was so inspired by him yeah and it seems like both of you have yes. been as well yeah. And uh, I feel because one of the reasons I love his music is he's so connected to it. Mm -hmm. And and what you just said, and you and I think that this goes back to what you were saying, Massimiliano, is that when you are moved by other people's words, there's nothing wrong with that. That you're still connected to it. So as an artist, your your feeling about those words comes through. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people just sing songs and they're just singing them. You can tell the difference. It's like, no, what's your interpretation of that song? Even it may not be yours, but like my favorite song that I ever ever heard in my life is "Gravity" by Sarah Bareilles. Mm -hmm. I yeah. didn't write it, but it speaks to me more than anything. Mm -hmm. And when I sing it, I'm completely in it, and yeah. I love that, you know. So, um, right? Would you say that? Oh, yes, yeah. people are writing things. Ma Mandar Mandaris. Mandaris. Yeah, Everyone Sir Duke. Duke. Okay, name your favorite. Okay, thank you, Mandar. Great question. Name yeah. your favorite. Uh, Wonder. Song. Yeah. How about you go first? Love is in need of love today. Oh, that's a great one. Love's in need of love today from a Songs in the Key of Life, yes. right? Yeah. How about you? Sir Duke. Sir Duke. It has a big meaning for me, for sure. Um, I was in a show band back in back in Prince Edward Island with Brittany Banks, who I love. She's an incredible performer. Um, and with Christine Raman, we had this whole thing. And I, I was like the black sheep because I wasn't a part of the band program. Started a couple of days in, and they're like, you don't read music. <laughs> what are you doing in yeah, this class? Yeah, I don't very well at But all. they still, they ended up bringing me in to be a part of the show band, because they're like, well, you still sing, and right. we're well, going to make an it. exception for you. So. I know, that's the thing with singers, you know, it's yeah. like we just, and you know, it's funny, uh, Stevie Wonder, I love, oh, I think Overjoyed is my favorite Stevie yeah, Wonder. Yeah, yeah. But then I was also thinking of Ribbon in the Sky, so, I mean, there's so many, oh my God. But Overjoyed, I think, is, yeah. is my favorite Stevie Wonder song. Yeah. Um, we should harmonize we, Love is in Need of Love today. You know it? Yeah. You know Love's in Need of Love today? No. Um, <laughs> I'm like, it's okay. Maybe at the end, we will, you'll, you'll, you could pick, probably pick up the harmonies like that. Maybe Massimiliano, you'll sing it as we go out, and we'll harmonize with oh, you. Oh, yeah. I think that that would be beautiful, okay. and you'll pick it up in two seconds. Okay. All right, so Andrew Holmes has joined us. Leo, you love me. You love me. He's saying, do you love me? Leo, you see what happens? They start talking to each other. Okay, <laughs> let me check the time. Um, all right, and it's already 9.30. Mm -hmm. So now, Massimiliano, what, you did a George Michael show, and you had a, a band, and, a whole band and everything, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Backup singers and... Band and a gospel choir. Wow. And I got also a harp player as well. A harp wow. player. Yeah, my intention is to do next... I mean, I'm, I'm moving towards, like, more doing a... Give a story to the show. Okay. So, I, you know, actors, dancers involved, and also... 
I'm gonna have an orchestra playing. So that's my my goal for this project. Wow, Here that's amazing. Yes. Yeah. That is amazing. So that's a very big goal. I wanna spread his legacy, you know? Yeah, but that's wonderful. I love okay. that. Someone speaks to you and, and you wanna continue the you wanna continue to have other people enjoy yeah. the way you felt when you listened yes. to him. Mm -hmm. I am a huge George Michael fan, so you got an audience right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and Brady, you're working on an album, you said? Yeah, yeah. I'm working on various projects, but my album, um, I've been working on it for everybody that's watching back home in public. Yeah, I've been on it for a long time. That's it's, what happens with albums? Yeah, it's been four years of working on this album, approximately. And I have all the songs, I have all the pieces. Um, I also do production as well. So oh, I play, you do? Yeah, I play drums, piano, guitar, and then I sing, dance, and act. Wow. So it's difficult whenever you're trying to be involved in all the process because then you kind of get, you're it's doing hard, everything yeah, yourself. It's, yeah, so. Sometimes you have to step out of it and just like, that's what I do with my musical director, Lynn. Lynn Portis is so great at like, I will sometimes have to step out and she will tell me, you know, what she thinks and I completely trust her. Joe Gullah has joined us. Michael Woolley has joined us. Oh, my God. Oh, Rena, you love Overjoyed, too? Me, too. I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, listen, I'll, I, it, it, there were years where I was writing songs like crazy, and then other years where I would write one and then just walk away from it and do other things. I think that's what it is about being an artist. So, with that said, if you, when you're not singing, Massimiliano, is there other forms of art that you enjoy being part of? Yeah, I do actually, um, I I was born in fashion, my dad, he used to, I mean, he's still in fashion, my mom used to be his model back in the days. And, wow, and I love yes. this, <laughs> because so, this is what I learned about my friends that I didn't know when we do the show, I didn't know that, but that makes sense, because you're a sharp dresser, <laughs> I always say that about you. Thank you, babe. <laughs> so your your dad was in fashion, and uh, so I grew up with it, I grew up like surrounded by beauty, and my mom's like, she's very... She, she looks at aesthetics for her is everything. So mm -hmm. I grew up with that uh, sense of say, and I'm very thankful about it. And right now, I mean, I'm a designer. I mean, uh, I'm a designer and a visual merchandiser too. Visual merchandiser is like more a brand. I take care of brand image for a retail for brands like fashion. Oh, so, okay. Really cool. That's what I do. Like, you know, I give a new image. Uh, it's amazing. Every brand. Like I do work on photo shoots, styling. I do... Everything related to it. So that's all. Because we talk about, on the show is about, we celebrate creative people and the, the reality of that. The reality of living, thriving, surviving as a creative person. Not just in New York, anywhere. And especially you guys are from other places. Mm -hmm. So, and Brady, you do, besides playing the guitar and singing, what is another art form that you love? I love doing graphic design. I do a lot of drawing on my, my iPad. Um, and I like to create. And wow. So, like, I've been, it's funny, I had an art teacher back in the day that really inspired me and then I took a break from it for a really long time and then all of a sudden I just picked up a pencil on a piece of paper after so many years of not doing it yeah. and I just was like oh you this is fun for you it's cathartic you're Absolutely. getting your art out you know you're creating and and then it just became doing you know? yeah and I yeah. think it, it doesn't matter Suzanne Mason showing us hi Suzanne Mason um People are clapping. People are like just loving what we're saying because it's true. I think that any artist I've ever met doesn't just do one thing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't know what that other thing is, you know. Yeah. But that's why I always ask people. Um, and you're also a dancer, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a show coming up actually at Alvin Ailey, which I'm super excited about. Um, I'm not an Alvin Ailey dancer, but okay. I get wow. the opportunity to perform at Alvin Ailey. And wow. For a very good cause, we're raising money for four different organizations. Okay, um, this is there. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. Dance class there. yeah, yeah. Wow, it's, look at this! It's, it's beautiful. I, I mean, love like, it. It's, I love the environment. It is. Yeah, it's that's very a up, like you know, it's like very creative. Yeah. There. Um, very supportive. Very yeah. Everybody's yeah, and it's just it's a very professional atmosphere, and people are very kind. And mm -hmm. um, we're doing it. Uh, it's called Come Back Once More, so I can say goodbye. And I'm singing, dancing, acting, producing arranging in the show um, and we're raising money for um, four different it's all going it's all just a you know one off June 14th through the 17th and I love being there with Labyrinth Dance Theater and uh, Sa Sasha Spielbogel but um, it's about gay life from 1965 through 1995 in New York City wow. so as you can imagine it's a very uh, historic piece and period in time 
that we should never forget. Right, um, and it's perfect because it's so it's World Pride this year. Yes, yeah. So that is amazing. Wow, there's a lot going on. There's yeah. so much going on in this city, I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, and Massimiliano, what are you working on that we should... I know you're working on the, the, the show right now. Yeah, I'm so, working on doing the show and to bring it... I would like to bring the show and I'm ready from Miami to Los Angeles. Oh, wow. I have some location that might be interested and also in Vegas. And um, i also working on my music as well. And uh, so I'm working on my project and... Well, this is it. Like, you know, there is like, um, I have a show actually the, um, the 31st of May at the Sugar Bar, which is like the Ashford Simpsons. I Simpson. love so the great. Sugar Bar. Yeah. Cause, you Ashford know, and Simpsons Bar. Yeah, Ashford and mm -hmm. Simpsons Bar. Like, they were a great institution like back in the days. Like, you know. I world. love, I love that place and I love them. Yeah. Mm. And so I love, I love Valerie. Like, she's, she's amazing. amazing. Yeah, she's what? like one of the best songwriters I think in the world. I, I agree with you 100%. And she's such a nice person. Super nice. Super humble. The daughters, yes. Nicole and Asia, they are super amazing. And I'm doing this show on the 31st of May when I'm... Okay, Sugar Bar is located on 72nd Street between, I want to say, West End... And Amsterdam. Yes. Yes. This is an amazing place owned by Valerie Simpson. Used to be Ashford and Simpson. And uh, yeah. uh, sadly, he's passed away. But she still runs it. And it's one of my favorite places in the city. No, it's really great. Like, what time's your show? We have to... 8 p.m., 31st of May. And actually, the show... I wanted to say that I'm doing this um, for uh, for a cause. Like um, I'm doing this because the son of my one of my good friend in Italy, he was born with a illness, with his uh, connected to his eyes. And okay. So everything will be the vote. It's a free show, but everything will be whatever we wanted to give to this suggested like, this, donation as a suggested yeah. donation for uh, this association. That, that is that I amazing. Want to, Incredible. You know, I want to support because I think it's always good. To, it's always good to, to do good. So it's always yes. going to come back to you. No Absolutely. Yeah. Always good to do good. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. And, and nothing bad is going to come from doing good. No, nothing, so. you know, people may not appreciate you in that moment, but that's on them. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's none of my business. No, but <laughs> other people, yeah, there's a saying that says what other people think of me is none of my business. Never. I nope. love that. Isn't that a great saying? <laughs> All right, let's check in with some of our Corey Crane in between West End and Broadway. Thank you, Corey Crane. Yes, I love Sugar Bar. So um, let me see. Uh, a lot of our friends have uh, so have joined us, and Leo also put up. Yes, please, whatever you no, like. There was a question, man. I was like, say, hey, Brady. Has Brady ever, ever been to Italy? Thank you, uh, Masmiel. Yes. And if yes, was his favorite thing he liked about it? Uh, has Masmiel been to Canada? And same question. That's a great Mandar A plus for this class today. Brady, what, what <laughs> he's so he's so smart. Uh, okay, so that's a great question. Have you ever been to Italy? I have never been to Italy. Okay, yeah. so but you, okay? what's your favorite thing about <laughs> about yeah. Italians or um, Italian art or? Well, I mean, I feel like I feel like I get a piece of Italy in New York all the time. Absolutely, it's literally one of the most Italian it's cities true. ever. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, I I can only say that I find that the Italian culture is incredibly giving and and very forward too. I feel like there's a lot of honesty. It's like yeah. right, cut and dry. Yep, that's in it. In a great way, like you know, not in like a. You know. Yeah, that's the whole tell it like it is yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah. That's a great question, man. Love that. Yeah. And uh, Massimiliano, have you ever been to Canada? Yes, I've been once. I've been actually, actually twice. I know, one, Vancouver. Vancouver. I've been to Vancouver for work. And I found it very similar to Milan. I don't know, maybe the atmosphere, but full of, a lot of Asian people there. Like, yeah. I know, Vancouver. Yeah. The weather was amazing. Not in case, I love Asia, I love China, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, uh, but I've been once, and uh, it was great. I mean, it was for work, it was for a couple of days, it was very fast. But I get, I get in and I get out. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, I love, I've never been to Canada, but I love Canadians. Every time I meet someone from Canada, I know it before they even say it. Because yeah. I find Canadians to be very good-hearted people. And, and you said, someone used the word humble. You said that about Valerie Simpson. I feel that about Canadians. They're confident, but there's a humility to them and a kindness that I really am drawn to. So thank you, well, Canada. We love you. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much. All right, so we are coming to the part of our show called, we have to say, go ahead, keep eating all together. The section of our show called, go ahead, go ahead keep, keep eating. eating. Oh. All right, so. Uh, what, what does this mean? If you've never been on the show, you're like, what the hell is she talking about? So on this show, I was telling Brady earlier, 
I always ask people, creative people, to come on and talk about their creativity. So if for me, I would be a hypocrite if I'm not um, challenging myself every week to be creative. Now, I usually go with the theme, too. So this week, um, Saturday is Passover, and Sunday is Easter. Okay. And they usually are pretty close together. Now, you were talking about faith. Mm-hmm. And so this, I just love all this stuff. I am a big believer that we really all... We all believe in the same thing. We just call it a different name. Yeah. And if we remove the the control mm-hmm. of religion out of it, yes. and just let our hearts yeah. be connected, yes. then this the our our spirituality is so similar. And nothing against religion. I'm you know I grew up Catholic. I, I loved my upbringing. Yeah. What, what were you brought up? I'm Protestant. Okay, so yeah. you know, but uh, my Jewish friends are very connected to their faith, and I think. As long as people don't use it as a weapon, that religion is wonderful. Right. And faith is... It's is, something that connects everything. Yeah. Like, I believe that, you know, like you were saying, and actually, um, I would like to talk about this topic. I know it's very... But religion is like something that it's great. And I believe I was raised Catholic. Yeah. And the more I, you know, the more I grew up, the more I made my own mind, the more spiritual I become. Right. I, was, I love that. The more you made up your own mind, the more spiritual you became, yes. rather than someone controlling your thoughts. No, that's mm-hmm. the thing. That's it's, the opposite of and, God, yeah, I believe. Yeah, and that's the thing, like, you know, when religion is used for, you know, other causes, like to put people against each other, yes, that's then, the worst things that could yeah. ever But then God is absent. <laughs> yes. There is yeah. no God no. in putting people against never, each other. Never, never. I love this conversation, yes. we're going to continue it. So, I always try to go cook for with the theme they gave i asked brady and he i always ask uh, allergies restrictions preferences and um they were pretty open massimiliano did say he keeps his carbs low which i respect my dad was just massimiliano my dad is so much like you and he is very good looking very yeah, stylish she's a hairdresser parroquero. nice okay so what did i do i didn't cook too much this week because because of the holidays i wanted to go with the traditional foods of that now, my friend Peter Ionello, Italian, makes mm. pizza cena mm. or pizza rustica. Pizza rustica. Pizza rustica, you call it. And we used to call it pizza cena. Mamma, which, this right. is for you. <laughs> exactly. So, pizza cena, the word uh, piena really means full. So, uh, a pizza that is full of things. But cena is the slang. Yeah. And uh, rustica is rustic, of course. So, what goes in a pizza rustica? It's a crust, just like a pie crust. And this is off the hook. He Peter made three uh, uh, pies. So Peter also Peter Ranello, you can order pies from him, uh, and he makes these. And he'll deliver them. He delivered them yesterday. Yeah. So what's in here? It's like a quiche kind of, mm. with salamis and hams and prosciutto, Rigotta. rigotta yes, uh, Rigotta cheese. Cheese and it's so good. And the yeah. crust to die for. Peter Ranello, I cannot say enough about your pizza cena, pizza rustica. <laughs> I have full little pies in there, but I just wanted you to see the inside of that. That is a very traditional Easter uh, thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, that's usually the only time I have it is at Easter time. Now, I wanted to honor our Jewish friends as well. And as we know, Jesus was Jewish. So, uh, <laughs> Okay, so now Muslim Liano did take a bite out of this, so I will tell you. So <laughs> he, he was so hungry. He's so cute. And he didn't know that it was our display plate. But what did I, I was talking to my friend um, Liz so Goldenberg, good. and I said, what are some traditional Passover foods? So she told me a bunch of them. And then what sh- uh, my bells and were going off in my brain when she said brisket, because I love brisket. So I uh, wanted to get a good, a really good brisket, and I, I actually bought one at uh, Best Market in Harlem, because they make a really good brisket. But what I did was then I doctored it up, and I made the gravy from scratch. So uh, without the bite that Massimiliano took, <laughs> this is a brisket. That's okay. A, a brisket <laughs> that's been uh, braised and cooked, and uh, I made a delicious gravy with onions and garlic and um, uh, what else did I put in there? Onions and garlic and peppers and all kinds of Provencal spices. I could so taste the onion. This you could sp- taste the onion. Oh, I love onion. I, I love a big fan. So this also has chives on it. Can, okay, go ahead. Maria, can, I, can, I, can I say something? Yes, please. Because actually your gravy, yeah. I don't know if you ever eat in Italy, this pasta called pasta alla genovese. Pasta no, genovese, Pasta no. genovese is mm-hmm. done with a lot of onion, like, you know, like, for, and you cook the onion for six hours, and oh. it becomes something like this. So when I try it, I just want to say something for 
mi dà l'italiano per dire che, you know, I suggest the pasta alla genovese, it's so good and it, mm-hmm. it tastes like pasta, like pasta genovese. Pasta I genovese. put a lot of onion in there. I so like good. onion and garlic. Yeah. So it's a lot of that and I put a uh, little red wine <clears throat> in yes. there too. Yeah, that's yeah. the sauce that you do. You don't like also pasta alla genovese. Uh, yeah. I want to add No, I love it that you said that. Yeah. Thank you so much because I was just going with what I wanted to eat. Yeah. yeah. What what did I and with a beef broth, like a nice so beef good. broth and uh, uh, you know, flour and all that stuff. So we're having that. I have a lot in the kitchen. I'm sure now, my dad's watching right now. Like and he's loving food. it. Food, yeah. Food. Yeah, well, we have my to listen. Incredible cook. That's how I lure my guests in. And that's also, I reward <laughs> myself with food at the end of the show. Love that. So now this I have made. I leaned Italian on this, Brady. I hope it's okay. Yeah. So I have a, a, a spring mix uh, of lettuces and all that baby, all the baby spring um, lettuces. And then I put a little bit of... Um, Uh, iceberg in there as well. Then I have radishes, I have baby cucumbers, and I have vine ripe tomatoes for our Italian friends with oregano and basil is in here. Mm. I am going to do a basic uh, balsamic vinegar with an extra virgin olive oil with a little bit of lemon. That's it. I'm not going with the fancy mm-hmm. oils. I mean, all of... Uh, um, less is more. Less is more with this because I have all these different spices in it. I'll squeeze a little lemon on there, a little salt and pepper. We're ready to go. With that now, because it is Easter, of course you have to have Easter candy. This is our dessert, <laughs> our Easter candies. I'm using my Sylvia Santoro um, Lennox bowl that she gave me. So here we have our little Easter candies, and I got these delicious little sugar cookies. Ugh, Look at these so good. guys with little nice. sprinkles, our, our uh, sprinkles. Um, Easter sprinkles. Now, I got to tell you, this made me cry. Literally, I cried when he came in. True. Right? E la verità. So, la verità. Uh, so Massimiliano came in, and uh, he brought something in a bag. And I was like, oh, what did you bring? He brought me what my dad used to bring me. And my dad is still alive, thank God. My, and I spoke to him yesterday. He's great. He used to bring me this when I was a little kid. And do you know that he still gives it to me? Even though I don't make it home for Easter every year, he buys it and saves it for me. So that when I do go home, it's still there. And this is, <clears throat> Massimiliano, I want you to talk about this egg. And this is a, basically, this is, we call it uh, uh, Uovo di Pasqua. It means like es- Over- is- Easter egg. Easter basically. egg, right. And in Italy, it's very famous because usually during Easter time, uh, especially for the kids, but, you know, even uh, adults. Adults. Because now they do for everybody. Like, you know, there is the high one, like with the, and then what is, what is happening, this is chocolate, it can be, the, mo- the most delicious chocolate, the most delicious dark chocolate. chocolate, actually in Napoli, where I come from, there is this place called Gayo Den, so good, and inside, you open the egg, like the Easter egg, inside there is a little surprise, yeah, you know? I love it, I remember when I was a kid, I was it's a big so deal. happy to have it, you know, this is, is such an Italian tradition, yes. I cannot tell you, and I didn't get it, I didn't, But Massimiliano brought it to me, and I literally started, I teared up. It's true. Because it was, this was the symbol of Easter for me when I was a kid, and my dad would, and my dad still, I am not a kid anymore, I act like a kid, but I, my dad still buys this for me, and he is in his 80s, and this is what he gives me for, and I love it, and he will give it to me when I go home, I'm sure, in a few weeks. So thank you, Massimiliano. Welcome, Extra dark chocolate. I love dark chocolate. It's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. And that's right. There's like a little, it's thin too. Yes. It's not like a thick chocolate. It's huh. a, you can crack the egg easily and there's a prize inside. Yes. So Great. now Brady, was there something, um, like that's a specific Italian thing. Now your family, you said, are they French Canadian? No, no, no. no. Okay. I just, I actually, so all my courses were in French from 6th grade through 12th grade. I think you have to English. do that, right? Yeah. No, I mean, it's... yeah, you can take the immersion program if you decide to. And I was going to take band and that, and my mom and dad were like, mm, pick one. Yeah. So I picked French, and I'm so glad that I did. I mean, because I still got to do all the music so stuff beautiful. afterwards, you know. Um, Languages are so beautiful. And, you know, right now, Mark's 11, it'll be 11 years on my birthday next week that I've been living in birthday? New York. April 24th. Happy birthday! I'm going to be 29 and I'm performing at Julius's for my birthday. Yeah, so please talk about Julius because Julius is this wonderful bar that's iconic and you now have a, a gig there that you do every month, I right? I do, yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I'm playing guitar and singing at Julius Bar. Um, it's been amazing. Helen's been so wonderful to have me there. Um, but it's called Tune Up Tuesdays and mm-hmm. I figured, you know, I don't really celebrate my birthday very much so I figured what I would do is I would just throw in a birthday show on the 23rd. Could keep um, talking. I'm just checking. Someone sent me yeah, a text yeah. about the sound. I want to make sure it's 
Right. Uh, so keep keep going, honey. Yeah, so um, I'm going to have a performance at Julie's Bar. If you want to come celebrate my birthday from 7 to 9, and maybe if you want, you can come up and sing a song or something. Oh, nice. Wonderful. No problem. Yeah, um, that would be really fun. But I was thinking about, too, you said we, we didn't really have any tradi- I don't know if we had any traditions. Mom's, mom, Dad, I don't know if we had any traditions back home for Easter. I was... I'm not sure about like what it was aside from the Easter egg hunt that we'd standard do. I don't know if we had any dishes or anything. Um, I, I, the Italians are very big on Easter. Is very big, um, yeah. and we um, we would also like the lamb. Do they still cook? Man- Come si yes, agnello. Agnello. Oh, yeah, 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 lamb is really big with the that, Italians yeah, for fancy. Easter. Yeah, for Easter. Yeah, and yeah. the Greeks too. I think the Greeks do that whole. You know, I don't know what. Other people do, but that's we were Easter is very big with Italians. Yeah, yes. you know. Um, like, go ahead, mom, dad. If you're watching, I don't know if you're yeah, awake right okay. now. Please let me know if there is some sort of food that we let, traditionally Let's made. get away from the Easter thing for a minute now. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bill Goffey just texted me and said oh. that the sound went bad. Is everybody? Is the sound okay? Oh. I, no one else has mentioned it, so I think it should be okay. Oh, no. Sometimes, I don't know. Who knows? I just got my internet. Yeah, maybe I don't know because there's too much. I just got my Wi-Fi updated, but the sound like uh, you're on a spaceship and okay. All right. Oh. Anyway, sound is off. Okay, sound oh. is not good. Okay, so hold on a second. I'm gonna play with the sound. Although we only have a few minutes left to our show, believe it or not. Okay, I'm gonna play with the sound that way, this way, that way. Hold on. Hang on, everybody. I think it's good on the radio end, so it's just on the Facebook Live. Is it better now? You guys, does it sound a little bit better now? I said reset the sound, please. It happened when you put the food back. That's weird. I don't know. I think I might have a... a... All right. So we'll just keep going because we have a little bit... uh, Reset the sound. Okay, so the problem with... I'm trying to fix... Okay, we're going to keep talking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep talking with the sound. This is okay. This should help a little bit did that help at all okay all right well just hang in there you guys uh oh maybe that's okay someone said all right so we're gonna keep all right we're gonna keep talking because the radio station we're still linked into the radio station so some hi peter and in yellow has joined us he's the one who made the pizza rustica which we also call peter thank you peter very much yeah pizza canna and he is italian so um Jimmy, how's our sound over there? Is it okay? I just want to make sure. I don't. I think I might have to invest in a new microphone. I don't know. I was right. kind of avoiding it. I got a bumped up internet and maybe loose connection. Okay. Loose All right. So let me see. There's that. I'm jiggling it. Is that any better, you guys? I hate love when this guys. happens. Love you too. Yeah, we love you too. We love your pizza. We love your pizza, <laughs> and we're going to eat in a little while. And as I said, Massimiliano already took a bite out of my uh, beef. my beef brisket. So I, but it was adorable. Gain, you know who does that all the time? The gain is too high. The gain is too high. Okay, so hold on a second. Okay. How's better. this? Is this a little bit better? I just lowered the gain. A little bit better. All right. This. Well, what are we gonna do? We're gonna kind of keep rolling with it. We have, have about four minutes left to our show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I always ask this. I like this question because we want to leave people with something. So Massimiliano, if yes. there is someone listening out there that is thinking about moving to New York or going into the art, um, what advice would you give them? Uh, to just don't think about it and just do it. I mean, that's what happened to me actually. You know, when I moved to America. I just didn't think about it, and I just stayed over stayed. You know, like so, really, like when you say do what your gut says, it's true because it's, no matter what, it's always the the is always true. The process could be a little bit painful, maybe, but then the reward is great. I mean, it's, do it. Just do it. That's it. And Brady, what would you tell people? I'd say stick it out. This is the thing. I've been living here for like eleven years now, and I think that the most important part is that if you have a dream in your heart, or if you have any um, there's, there's just a certain sensation if you have a feeling inside of you go with it no matter what it is and New York is one of those places where it's very easy to be distracted or seem like maybe you're not going very far doing the right things but it's a tough city that that, that rewards you in so many other ways and it's so much more worthwhile to just stick it out keep your you know, you know your head to the 
pavement, or not headed to the pavement, but... Your nose to the... Nose to the... Grindstone. To yes, the grindstone. Like like a, hey, if your head hits the pavement while you're at it, so be Get it. Get back up and put a Band-Aid on it, you know. Um, okay, now, Leo has put up uh, Brady's YouTube. He, as we go back, you guys can also, after the show, go back and check everything out. Uh... Oh, uh, Dave Down says, Kate Greer says hi to everyone. She's shooting in Sands Point uh, for the affair tonight. How exciting. Huh? Your sound, okay. Uh, hi, Dave. So the sound, I think, is fixed again. All right, so uh, Rick Holm, thank you for the advice. The yeah. gain was too high. I think sometimes when we're, um, different things are happening, but I, I think it's time I invest in a new microphone. And this is a great mic. It's a Mac mic, but it's time. Um, so just keep, keep, I always say the same thing. Keep doing what you're doing. And also, the advice I would give people is don't compare yourself to, don't get in your own way. Because I think we tend to, as artists, we overthink things. Yeah. Just really follow follow your gut, mm-hmm. follow the flow, creatively what is coming through you. Be more like an instrument and, and let your creativity play you. Because I think rather than say, oh, I should be writing this, I should be doing, don't stop saying I should. Make a list of things you want to do, and uh, when you have you feel that you don't have a creative bone in your body, do other things. Clean your house, um, you know, uh, change something, change something in your living room, whatever it is. Um, sometimes it's doing a mundane task that gets your creativity going. Mm-hmm. Don't or go to a show, go see someone else, and never be. Don't sit in the audience and ever be envious of someone else's success or creativity. We are all actually exchanging energy Mm -hmm. and we influence each other, you know? So I believe that has a lot to do with it too. Hey, Jimmy Bell, how much time do we have? A minute and a half. A minute? A minute and a half? Okay. So we want to remind you that we are here on Armed Radio, armeddigitalmedia.com, armedradioglobal.com. You can listen live on on your computer. And also this goes into the podcast. It's a different microphone, so it will sound different than the, it won't go into that static. Uh, Spotify on, um, what is it, Jimmy? One minute. One minute. Okay, thank you. Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Spreaker. It'll probably be available within the next 12 hours, so you can just check. And uh, this is episode 92, and so all my other episodes are up there. So please feel free when you're listening to uh, go back and check out other episodes. And usually I list the people's names. If people's names aren't there, it means that I did the show and had call-ins usually. Um, and I also am a singer and songwriter. I have a website. It's riagentili.com. And so please go and check out my music. You can also download it. And support your local artists. Tell people... Um, you know, tell people with your with your presence in the audience that they are doing the right thing. You know, and and that's all I can say. It's just important to keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, Massimiliano Sims. Thank you, Maria, our for friends. Me. And thank you, Grazie che mi ha portato l'uovo di Pasqua. And Brady Cudmore, Brady, just uh, how are we going to find you now, Brady? Um, you can find me at uh, Brady's World, which is uh, attached here, and then also find me. Uh... <laughs> Okay, thank you everybody. Bye. We love and appreciate you. Thanks for coming back week after week. Bona Pasqua! Bona Pasqua.